The drone design featured in this video is capable of achieving speeds that may exceed the maximum permitted ground speeds as regulated by aviation authorities in some jurisdictions. Operating a drone at such speeds may require special permissions or waivers. Please always operate your drone safely and in full compliance with your local laws and regulations. Hi there everyone, this video is a build guide for the AOS HS5. This is a 200 mile per hour capable 5 inch FPV drone and you can find links to where you can pick up the frame kit down in the video description. This frame is incredibly easy to build but it never hurts to have a few tips and tricks so I'm going to be taking you through the whole build process, giving you some idea of what to look out for and we're also going to be discussing a bit about component choice as well. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. All right, so let's dive into the build and we're going to start by looking at the carbon and hardware and come on to the 3D prints later. You should have three different lengths of M3 screw, a shorter, a medium and a longer screw. The medium length screws are for your stack, so let's start with those. We've got the main plate here of the frame and you see it's got four press nuts in the top of it. You're going to want to take each of those medium screws and pass the screw up through the press nut and screw it into the main plate. So let's just run those four screws in there like that and then do them up nice and tight. Once they're done up tightly, you can just check the tension, make sure they're really nice and secure. And just double check that you've got the head of the screw on one side and the press nut on the other side so that everything is being sandwiched nice and tightly and you have some really nice rigid stack screws. The next thing we're going to do is assemble the long screws that are eventually going to secure the bottom shell. So take your long 30 millimeter M3 screws and one of these small nine millimeter washers with a three millimeter hole, pass the washer all the way down to the end of the screw and then take a 15 millimeter standoff and thread that onto the end of the screw. And then you're going to want to run the standoff all the way down up against the washer, just like that. So that's going to be your screw assembly and we're going to make three of those. Now let's talk about installing the ESC motors and arm fairings. The ESC is going to be the first thing you put down on the stack. To help you orientate yourself, the front of the frame is going to have this M3 hole drilled in it. So that M3 hole in the middle of, the, of one side indicates what's going to be the front. Your ESC needs to be wired up such that the XT60 cable is going to come down and through this large cutout here in the base plate. You need your pigtail to end up underneath the main plate because that's going to be where the battery ends up. The motors are also going to be installed underneath the base plate. So you need to make sure that the motor wires can come up on top of the arm so that they run along and you can solder them to the ESC. To do that, you're going to bend the motor wires down as they come out of the motor. So your motor wires are going to come vertically down and they're going to sit in this little cutout that exists at the end of the arm. So we're just going to put the motor there like that and you can see that the motor wires are coming up and then over running along the top of the arm and then they're soldered to the ESC at the end. Once you have the motor set up like this you can take the top arm fairing and you're going to want to install that over the top of the motor wires. And the key here is just to go slow, be careful and make sure you don't pinch any of the wires. So you're just going to snug the uh, arm fairing down over the wires and just bring it kind of down gently, making sure that the wires all end up between the top arm fairing and the arm and you're not pinching anything. When you get everything lined up, you can just start to very gently do up some of the long cap head screws. You'll need the uh, cap head screws that are designed for eight millimeter arms. Um, they'll come with your motors. Just do one of those up a little bit just to get some tension on the whole deal. Now at this point, you'll probably find like I have that you have motor wire poking out from under the, under the arm fairing. To fix that, you'll just want to use like a normal flathead screwdriver and just very gently kind of poke the motor wire back inside, making sure that it's all running neatly under the arm fairing. And eventually, just with a bit of careful persuasion, that arm fairing will snug down nicely and all the motor wires will be running up onto the top of the arm and then along underneath the fairing into the center body where you can solder them to the ESC. 
Once that's done and you're happy with the arm fairing placement, you've made sure that you aren't pinching any motor wires, you can install the rest of the motor screws. Again, you're going to be wanting to use the screws that are designed for eight millimeter arms to take into account the two millimeters of fairing and six millimeters of carbon fiber. Be careful not to over tighten these motor screws because there is just plastic between the screw head and the arm. And if you over tighten them, you could crack the plastic of the arm fairing. So just go gently and just do them up to be nice and snug. They don't need to really be wrenched tight. Once you've got the top arm fairing secure, we can flip it over and we can install the bottom arm fairing. Looking at the bottom arm fairing, you may be able to see that there's a slightly wider end and a slightly narrower end. You're going to want to orientate it such that the slightly wider end is closer to the main body of the drone and the slightly narrower end is closer to the motor. I would suggest just taking a thin strip of double sided tape that you've cut to the right size and just sticking it down onto the bottom flat surface of the arm fairing and then you can just uh, peel that off of course to reveal the sticky side. When you're installing the arm fairing you want to make sure obviously it's lined up with the arm and you want to aim for about one to two millimeters of gap between the arm fairing and the motor bell. So let me just install this one here, get it in just the right place. And if I bring that up to the camera, hopefully you can see that I've got just about one to two millimeters of gap between the end of the arm fairing and the motor bell. That's just to provide enough clearance, obviously, to allow the motor to spin. Um, and not to have the arm fairing rubbing on the bell of the motor at all. This is also a good moment to let you know that you may need to modify this top arm fairing if, like me, your motor has a really large aluminium wire guide. Um, that can sometimes stick out. If so, just dremel away a little bit of the, the arm fairing to provide clearance. If you're using the T-Motor Velux 2808, that doesn't have this type of wire guide. Um, so you may not have this problem, but these are the Emacs Pro 2808 and they do have this large wire guide and I did have to modify the arm fairing slightly. Once you're happy with the position of the top and bottom arm fairing, the best thing to do is to just secure it with a wrap of vinyl electrical tape. So I'm going to use white, uh, JB would probably use red. Um, you can use any color you like, but just a nice neat wrap of electrical tape around top and bottom fairing is going to keep everything together um, and just help the build stay nice and neat. Um, if you want to and you want to make sure things are really secure you can wrap the whole arm with electrical tape if you want to um, but usually just one strip about here is going to be enough particularly if you've used double-sided tape on this bottom arm fairing as well. Now we're going to start assembling the front shell starting from the top down and the inside out. It's really worth making sure that all of your accessories have a plug at the flight controller end. That's going to make it so much easier when it comes to doing the final assembly of the front shell. So I've pinned out custom plugs for all of my accessories so that they are going to fit perfectly into this um, Blitz F7 flight controller that I'm using. Whatever flight controller and accessories you're using, it's definitely worth trying to make sure that there are plugs available so that you don't have to do any direct soldering when it comes to closing up the drone for the final time. Let's start with the GPS. If you turn the front shell over you can see that the GPS bay is in the back there. I've just stuck a nice bit of double-sided foam tape on the GPS as you can see and we just drop it down into the GPS bay, get it nice and secure and snug in its position. Super easy if you've got the cable just to hold it in place. And then you just want to reach in with a finger and just press really hard to get the GPS snugged down and stuck against the plastic. Just press for a few seconds and that's perfect. If you're using something like 3M VHB tape, that thing is not going to go anywhere nice and secure. And you've got this cable all ready for when we come to close the drone up to plug into the flight controller. Now we're going to talk about assembling the top plate and for the best experience I would recommend that you copy this layout. So you're going to want your air unit or VTX sitting on top of the top plate and you're going to want the antenna for your VTX running along the bottom of the top plate and then the lobe of the antenna, the actual circularly polarized um, radiator here, you're going to want to sit that in this kind of groove here 
where there's lots of nice space for it. You can secure the antenna in place using a couple of cable ties, which you can run through these little slots here. And I think Brian might also be 3D printing um, an antenna mount for this as well. I don't have that, but um, hopefully that will make it even easier. You're also going to want to install your receiver, and I would install that on the underside of the top plate. So the, the top plate is going to be in, in this orientation in the drone. Install the receiver on the underside of the top plate, run the antenna for the receiver kind of back along the same path as the VTX antenna, and then have the little T 2.4 gigahertz antenna just sticking out here. This is going to be the front of the drone and this gives the antenna plenty of space. It keeps the VTX antenna away from the uh, receiver antenna, which is good, and everything packages up really nicely. On the top, you're gonna to want your air unit in this orientation with the DJI logo facing upwards, and that's gonna make sure that your um, USB port and SD card slot line up with the cutouts in the uh, top shell so that you can just access those from the outside nice and easily. And again, you're gonna to want to plug um, the VTX connector up so that you can plug that into the flight controller easily. And just making sure that the um, little cables for the antenna come down one side or the other of the top plate and stay nice and far away from um, this hole here so they don't get pinched or anything like that. Hopefully, just looking carefully at this layout is gonna give you all the information you need to get your VTX receiver and all your antennas set up correctly. The O3 camera obviously is going to extend uh, off of the, the air unit here, and this obviously is going to be installed in the top of the shell. So let's do that now. The camera is installed in the top of the shell here with some M2 screws, and these cutouts give you easy access to tighten them, loosen them, and adjust the up tilt as you like. Now we're going to install the top plate into the shell, and for that you're going to need the long standoffs and these short screws. So we take our short M3 screws and we're gonna put them into the shell and kind of drive them home so they go all the way to the bottom of their slots. And you'll have three of these screws and they just go equidistantly around the shell. If that's all gone well, you should see the screws protruding a long way out of the shell at those three points. And then you're gonna take your top plate and bearing in mind that the front is going to be the place where we've got the ELRS antenna, we're just going to carefully place that top plate down onto the screws. And the key thing here is making sure that we don't pinch any of the wires and that we just line up the holes in the top plate with those protruding screws. There we go. So now the top plate is sitting down on top of those screws. Now just take a moment to have a really good look and make sure that you haven't got any wires pinched anywhere. That all your wires are loose and free and nothing is getting pinched. Especially not the camera cable for the O3. You want to make sure that that is definitely not getting pinched anywhere. Uh, that can be difficult to check. So what you might need to do is you might need to just drop the camera out and pull the camera to make sure that the um, the cable for the camera is completely free. And with the camera out, you can actually have a really good look around inside and make sure that nothing is getting pinched. And if you're confident nothing's getting pinched, it's time to take these long standoffs and just spin them down onto those screws. And you can also hold the standoff, obviously, and do the screw up from the other side if you like. That might be easier, actually. Now, as before, these are screws that are sandwiching plastic onto carbon fiber. So don't over tighten them because you don't want to crack the plastic of the shell. Just do them up till they're nice and snug and that should be absolutely fine. Once those standoffs are installed, that's going to be the top shell finished. And you can see we have all the nice plugs here which we're going to be able to connect to our flight controller when we do the final assembly and close up. Now it's time for the final close-up, and this is where you're going to be really grateful that you've plugged everything out because you can just um, plug all of the components into the flight controller and then install the flight controller onto the drone and then just secure the flight controller in place. I always like to use steel screws and nuts for my stack because plastic ones always strip out in crashes. So this is going to keep it nice and secure. 
Okay, once that's nice and secure, you're ready to do the final close up. And here you're just going to be just double checking that nothing is going to pinch any of the motor wires, nothing is going to pinch any of your signal wires as you do this up together. And just check through the cutouts in the frame that nothing is going to pinch. So I can see that that front one is totally fine. Now we're going to take the screws that we made a bit earlier and we're going to use these screws to secure everything together. And with any luck, it should just go together really nice and smoothly. Again, no need to over tighten these, just do them up nice and snug. And if you are worried about anything coming undone, always much better to use blue thread lock rather than over tighten things. Doesn't look like we have any motor wires anywhere near that one either. And last one, just checking for any pinches. Nope, all good. And there you have it. That's the front shell of the HS5 fully assembled. And you should have access to all the USB ports for the O3 Air unit and for your flight control stack without ever having to take this shell apart again. And that's just gonna make maintenance of this a lot, lot easier. When it comes to fitting the battery, obviously we're gonna be putting the battery in the bottom shell. So the battery is going to slot in here. You're gonna connect up the XT60 a nice twist lock will hold those two parts together. If you're concerned about the bottom shell ever coming loose, then there's a hole here under the camera in the front, and that's the hole I would suggest to use for a grub screw, which is just an M6 countersunk screw, and that will hold the, uh, the shell in place. Make sure that it doesn't come open while you're flying. Before you can use the bottom shell, you'll need to install this grid. Now, this grid comes as a separate part and you're gonna to want to insert it from the top of the shell, drop it down into the, into the bottom of the bottom shell, and then just push it home with some sort of plastic tool. Don't push too hard, obviously you don't wanna crack anything. Once you've got it nicely seated in the bottom of the shell, what I'd suggest is just putting a bead of super glue along each of the tines of the grid so that it doesn't go anywhere. And the reason this grid is a separate part is so that you get these nice vent holes to allow the base bleed drag reduction. Once you've got the grid installed, that's gonna be what the bottom of your battery rests on when you insert it into the bottom shell. Depending on the props that you're gonna use, you may need to use uh, one of these 2.5 millimeter carbon fiber prop spacers to stop the props touching on the motor. That's only gonna be a problem if you're using these very steep props like this. They will, without a spacer, touch the motor bell. So if that's a problem, just use the carbon fiber spacer provided to just space that prop off. Alternatively, if you're gonna use one of the prop spinners, it's always worth just making sure, sometimes 3D printed holes can be a little small, just run a five millimeter drill bit to make sure that the spinner hole is nice and open. And the spinner includes a 2.5 millimeter spacer here. So you're not gonna need the spacer as well as the spinner. To install the spinner, you're just gonna want to insert the prop into the spinner first. And then you're gonna put the prop and the spinner down on the motor. And then you're gonna use a 12 millimeter prop tool to install the prop nut through the hole in the back of the spinner. This is really nice and easy. And um, if you don't have one of these tools, you are gonna need it if you want to use the prop spinner. As well as this build guide, don't forget that I've prepared a tune for the AOS HS5, and you can find that by searching AOS HS5 in the Betaflight presets tab. Go ahead and apply that tune and that should help get your drone flying brilliantly straight away. If you're running 8S, you might need to turn the master multiplier down a little bit as the tune is for a typical 6S build, but that's the only thing you should need to change. Links to the frame kit, which is available now, are down in the video description, along with links to all of the recommended components for a high-speed 5-inch build. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.